the top right position, the blue Terran, we do have Lemony Tang. And in the lower left, as the red Zerg, we do have Jamesikins. They are tied up 1-1 in this best of five. And well, game two was pretty incredible. Game one was amazing. Game three, you've got a lot of expectations. Do you think they can deliver, Jorosar? Uh, 212 drone says they're going to struggle, but they're certainly going to give it a good <laughs> shot. I mean, that was... I, I don't know, that just completely defied all of my expectations. As you know, I rushed back in a taxi, had to get out and run the rest of the way home to cast here this evening. It's my first ever Heart of the Swarm cast as well. I jump in in game number two because unfortunately I wasn't fast enough to get game number one. I can honestly tell you, I wasn't expecting that. But that's good. When you get a pleasant surprise like that, I, I'd be happy. Did it, did it make the oh, run yeah. worth it? Was it? it, it I would have run three times the distance easily. Five, ten. 20, 212 times the distance. I would have done it. So not only are you an amazing caster, you're an incredible athlete as well. Do your talents ever end? I'm, I'm definitely an incredible athlete, especially when speaking to people who have never met me over the internet. <laughs> I can lead them to believe anything I want. Disclaimer, not strictly true. I and, hear you uh, actually work with some giant transforming robots one time to save the world. No, it's true, actually. I mean, Godzilla <laughs> is tough to beat, but once you sort of know the choke points and you know how to get him down on the ground, uh, it's usually just, it's fine from there. Now, Jurosa. Yes. Would you like to run the lovely viewers through what we could be expecting in this game? Or, or do you actually, have you noticed the key feature of this map, which is the natural has two entrances? Yeah, it's... I was looking at that as the map loaded as well, actually, and admittedly, I haven't played or seen this map so far. But this is a, this is a very, very sort of... I kind of want to say, like, Daybreak with an extra entrance kind of style uh, natural expansion that we see here. Now, admittedly, the map is relatively large, but let's not also forget that the rush distance between the two natural expansions is more or less a straight line. There's a minimum number of artifacts out in the middle of the map here. The two Zelnaga watchtowers are more or less semi-irrelevant as far as attacking through the center of the map goes. Really just useful to see if your opponent is flanking really heavily or maybe hiding a base somewhere. And uh, I, I'm really interested to see exactly what we can expect from both players on this map. It's a big map, but there's lots of open space. I get the impression that if we have one big fight in the center somewhere, that Jamesykins must be relatively satisfied with the layout. He will be. I mean, the thing I'm really expecting to see is after game one and two with Lemony Tang's incredible harassment play with Hellions, is obviously the back of Jamesykins' natural is mm, going to need to yeah. have some spying fallers there because while there are these destructible rocks that stop the quick entrance in, the watchtower route, if you go towards the watchtowers, you can run the long way through as long as this rock tower hasn't been knocked out. So I think James Eakins would be incredibly smart when he takes his third base to the right of his natural to knock out that rock tower as a priority because when you've lost 212 drones the game before, you want to minimize your risk of Hellions. <laughs> I don't really think there's any way to make that point better. Once, once you do lose that number of workers in a game, you have to be thinking to yourself, hmm, maybe next time around I'll consider doing things slightly differently. And we certainly see that here in this occasion as the Roach Warren already getting put down by Jay-Z Kins. I wonder if he's planning some early game attack. Well, the difference in build is very... Well, it's the same build as game one, pretty much. He's gone two base, two gas. The only difference is, is he's slightly faked out his opponent by basically getting one of the gas at the natural. So that means that should there have been that SCV still in there, it was taken out previously, and it did come in. It would only see one gas, so we may not predict it. But I'm definitely thinking James Dickens is going to go for a lot of roach aggression. And there we go. Five roaches queued up straight away. And there's this bunker, which is in arguably the most defensive position you could ever, ever put a bunker. But, again, there's a lot of damage being done. There's two Zerglings are actually oh getting a goodness. couple of SCV kills. And is this revenge for the drones? Yeah. <laughs> slowly, slowly getting revenge for them there. Three SCVs actually killed so far. And I'll tell you what, at the six and a half minute mark, that is not insignificant in this game. James Eakins microing those Zerglings so, so well at the natural expansion of Lemony Tank. And he's going to follow this up with the Roach aggression that is now marching out across the middle of the map. And you know what? Unit Roaches are good against metals. I suspect they are Hellions. They are Hellions, but Hellions are not coming out. We have Widow Mines. Aha, so uh, both Widow sides. Mines. 
Oh, and this, I tell you what, this might be exactly what he re what he needs right now. Lemony Tang losing those units early on in the game. The Widow Mines are coming out just as the Roaches get there. Will they be able to borrow in time? Is one of them going to go down? No, they literally just survived by the skin of their teeth. But the Roaches are now having free reign and Jamesykins picking off SCVs left, right, and center here. He is indeed. Unfortunately, Widow Mines do not one-shot Roaches, which means that these Roaches just been able to run in because the Supply Depot was down, and of course now out of range of the bunker. That move up into the main base may just be the winning move. Look at how many SCVs are going down here. We see that the tank was knocked out near instantly, and as such, so many SCVs dying. There are more Widow Mines out, but of course still there are four Roaches in this base with two Marines valiantly trying to kill them off. But Jorisa, Mm. 24 right. SCVs have been killed. Yeah, and I have to say, while I don't think this game is going to get all the way up to post 200, by the 8-minute mark, that is definitely a really good number to be at. James Eakins reading his opponent perfectly here with his early game Roach Aggression, not wanting the Hellions to come, and Lemony Tank deciding instead to go for those early Widow Mines by way of sidestepping any potential uh, difference that James Eakins comes with the build. Unfortunately, the roads were just a little bit too quick, and Lemony Tang now finds himself really far behind. He's at 14 workers to 46. James Ekins is in a supreme position right now, taking his third, no hassle whatsoever. He knows Lemony Tang cannot afford anything soon. Indeed, he can't. But, of course, James Ekins, that wasn't an all-in. He's taken his third base, he's got his lair up, he's got roach speed on its way. The one thing I'd love to see, considering he's got the 1-1 one, one missile attack upgrades, is a Hydra Den. Get Hydra Speed, because you know your opponent doesn't have the money to do anything too good. Go Roach Hydra and go and kill them. That is what I think would be the best situation for James Jamesikins right now. Of course, Lemmy Tang though, the Hellions have made it into the natural. They're killing some drones, but oh. not 217 yet. No, not just yet. They have a long way to go if they want to do that. Excellent, Micro, there by the Roaches. Only three drones going down for two Hellions there. Not making up the deficit by any stretch of the imagination. James Eakins almost three times the worker supply of his opponent here at 53 to 20. We're moving out with four Widow Mines and two Hellions from Lemony Tang at the moment to try and get some damage done. But he is risking everything because he has no Widow Mines left outside his natural expansion which might just be completely forfeit to these roaches if he decides to continue attacking. That's exactly what James Ekins is about to do. Luckily for Lemony Tang, there are two tanks there, and they are managing oh. to hold off those roaches for the time being. They're in a nice position, of course. Burrow is researched for the Zerg player. Meanwhile, these Widow Mines sitting outside the natural of James Ekins. But slightly concerningly is all the widow mines are clumped up together if you that means that there is a route through which is the route actually the james Ekin has been taking where they won't be within range so you do need to try yeah. and bait units back into those widow mines and that could be very good but we see the roach is coming and they've managed to pick off one of the tanks at the natural a lot of scvs getting taken down but hellions are there in the natural base of james Ekin and the widow mines now burrowing down at the ramp of the main Jorista, this is pretty hectic harassment for both players. What on earth am I seeing? Both, this is like a boxing match. Both players just completely slugging it out at the moment. There are zero workers mining at the natural expansion of Lemony Tangle right now. His orbital command is at about half health, but we have Hellions moving into the main of Jamesykins as well. Jamesykins, after pulling a 14 to 40 something worker supply lead, all of a sudden losing so many workers and the number of workers killed in this game has gone from 31-3 to 31-29 and three Hellions are still alive. Is Lemony Tank actually going to be able to come back here? It's going to be close. Of course, those Hellions are now going to be dead because of the Roaches. Luckily for Jamesykins, he morphed some Overseers in order to pick off those Widow Mines. But the big point is now Lemony Tank has actually killed more drones than he's lost SCVs. The work account 37 to 26 in Jamesykin's favor. And actually Lemony Tang doing what I would consider a smart move of abandoning his natural for the time being and just sitting behind a wall with some siege tanks there. Yeah, I, I think J Lemony Tang has a big disadvantage at the moment, which is the size of his standing army. He has done so much economic damage to Jamesykin's right now, completely taking him aback, and he's had to move his natural expansion into his main. But I have to say, though, even though you have triple mules, three orbital commands side by side in your main base with nothing else, 
is a big problem in the long term, and I wonder if Jamesy can seize this opportunity and goes, aha, I know exactly what you're doing here. I'm going to drone up as quickly as I can off all three of my bases again, and then be able to tech switch into absolutely anything I want, and still be able to out macro you. And in this case, he's going for Mutalisks. Indeed he is, but it has been scouted by Lemony Tang. He's seen that Spire, he's chucked down the missile turrets, and of course he's got Widow Mines. Very good against muters, especially when you're trying to be defensive. And James Ekins, as we can see, committing very heavily to these muters, getting 12 out straight away. And meanwhile, for Lemony Tang, he's getting his Thor, he's got Vikings, he's got missile turrets, and he's got Widow Mines. If I was a Terran in this situation, and I had all of those units, I'd be feeling pretty okay. I would be as long as I was mining from more than one place at a time, and this is really concerning me at the moment. Lemony Tang is seriously hurting in the income department. Yes, he's only at 900 compared to the 1700 of Jamesikins, which you think, well, one base versus three, that's actually not bad as far as the numbers go. Unfortunately, though, the longer Lemony Tang doesn't take the space, the more cost inefficiently Jamesikins can afford to trade, admittedly chucking all his roaches away at the front of this ramp here, but that's allowing the muters to pick off the tanks. The Thor popping up behind them though should be able to push this back but what lemony tang is not able to do right now is comfortably take his natural and james Eakins is willing to continuously throw things away for this to happen because he knows lemony tang is only on the one base indeed now being on one base as you cried like quite rightly said is fine for a short amount of time but james Eakins has contained his opponent he did lose an awful lot of mutalisks in that engage he lost 10 of them but of course if you're on three bases and you know your opponent is sitting there on one, you don't need to be cost effective. You, As long as you're mining more than your opponent, you can throw units at them all day, all night, and hope it works. But, of course, now we see Lemony Tang has managed to land that Orbital Command. The Roaches have pulled back for the moment because, of course, the Overlord has spotted this four Hellbat drop coming towards the third. And Lemony Tang loves Hellions, Jerosa. <laughs> I think we can say that very, very comfortably indeed. Uh, this is the part of the game where we're going to be able to see exactly what these players have been meaning to do as far as their strategy is concerned going into the mid game. I'm very excited to see uh, what they have in store for each other. Lemony Tank coming in with the help at It doesn't look like James Eakins is adequately prepared for this and four of them going to work on those drones. Good reactions to pick them away fairly quickly. Work is killed up to 41 versus 35 at the moment, but Lemony Tang is still down by over 20 workers in this game. Let's not lose sight of that fact. He's only just been able to retake his natural expansion, and James Eakins must be thinking now of what he can do on a counterattack. The counterattack is the big problem. If these roaches just march straight up in, there isn't much for Lemony Tang to defend. He's got one siege tank and two Thors to deal with 24 roaches. Of course, that Thor is gonna melt, and the tank, well, it's it's a bit far back. There is a second tank coming out now, but of course the muters are gonna be the threat there. Hellbats are morphing, but look at this. Jamesykins coming around the back of the natural, knowing that the tanks won't be in a good position. There is one Widow Mine positioned, but is it gonna be enough? This engagement could make or break it for Jamesykins, and is Lemony Tank gonna hold? The roaches charging in. They're gonna focus down the tank and the Thor very quickly. But the Thor does now just go down the Siege Tank, getting sniped off. The Hellbatch trying to hold as much damage as they can. And of course, the one Siege Tank in the main base doing a good amount of damage. And it looks like Lemony Tang is going to push this attack back for the moment. Oh, if I was James Eakins there, I might have even considered just moving my roaches behind the mineral line at the natural expansion and trying to snipe off the orbital and then just running away. Because the... As we can see, being on one base is hurting Lemony Tang so, so much right now. I like that James Eakins isn't pulling back with these roaches, even though he's still in the tank fire, guys, because he knows his opponent is going to get put back into being on one base. So you might as well continuously make sure their army size is as small as possible. The only thing keeping Lemony Tang in this game right now is the siege tank on the high grounds. Captain Siege Tank with 15 kills is literally the driving force behind him trying to retake his natural. And in the meantime, James Eakins has over doubled his supply. He has indeed. He is now down to 50, under 50 supply for the Terran, <gasps> to 140 the second. Oh. The Captain Tank died. It's a sad day. A memorial will be held in his honor if anyone makes it out alive. But of course, Lemony Tang, he's nearly mined out in the main base. There's roaches in there, and there's pretty much no army at all. And there's the 